Here is your senior uh, JREF fellow who's going to let you know what's going on. Please welcome Jamie Ian Swiss. Um, boy, I wish I could write poetry like that, huh? <laughs> so we've been doing this uh, annual conversation with Randy for a number of years now. We've covered all kinds of topics. One year was his, uh, his uh, career as an escape artist. Another year was the Johnny Carson spots. Last year was Geller. And it's really a chance. There's more than 1,100 of you here. We're all here for the same reason. We're all here because of this guy. Uh, but it's hard for us all to get a chance to have personal conversations, so this is an opportunity to kind of get them off script, off book, and see a little more of the real guy. This year there's a really exciting project underway, and we just thought we would talk about that, so please welcome back to the stage the reason we are all here, James Randi. Okay. 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 And uh, let's very quickly get to these gentlemen right here. Um, they're not just here because they're pretty faces. They actually have something to tell you. So why don't you briefly introduce yourselves and tell us how you got here? Sting. Okay. My name is Tyler Meesom. I am one of the co-directors and producers of An Honest Liar, of course, along with Justin. Uh, this is our third TAM. Um, we've been here filming each time. Uh, just a little introduction about me. I uh, wanted to be a filmmaker when I was 10 years old, which was kind of a rarity for a young boy growing up Mormon in a small town in Utah. But um, I, I started working when I was 17 in the industry, uh, started making commercials, made a big narrative film with Jeremy Renner and Minnie Driver, and then got uh, kind of disillusioned with the narrative world. And there's a, there's a saying that there are, there's very little money in the documentary world, so it tends to keep the assholes out. Um, so I guess I, I, yeah, they actually do. Um, so I guess I, well, <laughs> I found a niche, so I actually saw that there was a lack of them, so I moved into the doc world. Um, and, and, and so I found that the doc world is much more, uh, much kinder. There's much more of a social issue behind it, um, and that's kept us there. I made a film called Sons of Perdition after that, which followed uh, kids who were kicked out of polygamy, Mormon polygamy cult. It did very well. And um, now, thank you, somebody saw it. Uh, and uh, now we're embroiled in this film. Hello, Justin Weinstein here. I, I am not a former Mormon, uh, I think luckily. Uh, Our friend Brian Keith Dalton calls it a Mormon. Mormon. A foreman, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, a secular Jewish from New York, um, brought up uh, loving both filmmaking and science, and I have done a little bit of both. I uh, studied filmmaking at NYU and then went to become a research scientist and did that for a number of years before realizing that I enjoy uh, learning and explaining science a lot more than actually performing it. It can be very tedious, but more power to those who have the patience for it. Uh, so I got back into filmmaking doing work for PBS, Peter Jennings, ABC News, Frontline, and then into the independent documentary world. Um, and I guess the last thing I did before partnering up with this character uh, was a, a writer, editor of a film called Being Elmo that was about the, uh, the man behind the Muppet. Uh, some people saw that, good, thank you. Um, and uh, with Tyler, for the last two years of our lives, we have committed ourselves to telling the story of this man. And so what brought you to the story uh, of Randy? That? We, really? We found uh, yeah. What brought us to the, the story of Randy? After you make a film, it, it, everyone watches it, and then they immediately go, well, what's next? What's your next film? What's your next film? <coughs> and, and I was really struggling with what film I wanted to tell, and I had... I had, knew about Randy, but not that much, actually. And I reached out to the J-Rev, and it was one of the like four docs that I wanted to do. And uh, Sadie, who was there previously, uh, she said, yeah, we'll watch your film. She says, we get a lot of people who want to make a doc on James Randy, and we'll watch your film, and we'll see. And I almost forgot completely about it. I, I was flying to DC to a film festival, and I, as I was boarding the plane, I got a call from Sadie, and she said, we watched your film, it's perfect, we want you to do it. 
And I had met Justin at that festival. We had a drink and he knew Randy and knew him very well and said, we just said, let's do it. So we kind of, uh, there's been two years and a week since, since that day. <laughs> okay. I don't have to add to that. Uh, so, and we'll get into what the process has been like and what the experience has been like with him and, and for him, but uh, we have a few different video things that you've put together, and uh, probably most interestingly that I want to make sure we get to is you have, now, now we've done different topics here every year, and one year we did uh, his magic and escape career, and, we, and I managed to find some, some vintage footage that most people had not seen before. Uh, and we also used some footage from the uh, Alice C Cooper tour. Right. But um, you have managed to find some things that I've never seen, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking he's never seen, he, he doesn't know, he hasn't seen this, I have, you're gonna love it. <laughs> when he laughs you, like this, you, sounds, I know he, he's, <laughs> This is his evil self coming out, <laughs> believe me. You, maybe not so much. So, uh, who's got, who, how are we set up here? All right, well, so, yeah, we got over 300 videotapes from JREF uh, and super 16 millimeter beta, quarter inch reel to reel, uh, I mean, all kinds of dirt on Randy. And we <laughs> went beyond that and sought out, you know, <laughs> stuff from archives. <laughs> Who are you praying to that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> being atheists, I, I don't think your, uh, your prayers are being heard, unfortunately, and we're gonna embarrass you in any case. And uh, we're not actually going to embarrass you as much as we can because we are saving some of the, gre the, the greatest stuff for, for the film. Um, so what we have here is just a, a few interesting clips. You'll see uh, Randy, his, his hair mysteriously appears and disappears sometimes. Um, That's but, the least of it, baby. This is a little bit, there is one clip at the end that is a little more recent, which we just loved, but mostly this is uh, some, some pretty historic stuff. So why don't we just uh, roll, roll the first clip, thanks. Russell Dazzle presents one of the world's great escape artists, the amazing Randy. Hi, they've asked me on Razzle Dazzle today to uh, do a little bit of demonstration on how escape artists work, because that's what I do for a living. I have here a piece of rope embedded in my heart. And, uh, Sichelle, would you hold on to one end of it, please? Now, would you hold on to the other? Really sure. pull on it tight. Now, make sure it's a good, strong oh, piece of oh. rope. I knew she'd win. <laughs> I knew it. You said okay. it's a good, strong Okay, piece. that is certainly a good, All strong right. Piece of rope. Just let go of the ends now. It's about two feet long, and I'm going to ask you to tie my hands behind my back. And when you do it, you know, don't spare the horses. Really pull. Give me okay. a hard time. See All how right. right you can be. All right, hold on to that end of it. Thank you. you hold on to that end of it. Really pull on it. Back, don't oh, get the blood no. on your clothes. That's it. All right. Okay. Tie the other hand on top. Bring it around on top and tie a good tight knot there. Okay. Right out front where everyone can see it. Try to make a boy scout knot. Uh, okay. What kind of a knot? A boy scout knot. That was a girl guy. I was afraid of that. <laughs> Pretty heave on it now. There we are. That doesn't feel very tight. Put another knot on top of that, would you knot. please? Just one more to make sure. I don't want it to fall off around my hands. Here we go. What did I ever do to you? Why do you hate me so much? Now I'm going to see if I can take this rope off. It may take me a while, but I'll see how fast I can do it. Would you time me, please? You have a watch, please. Look at your watch. Uh, yeah. How about you? You got a watch? I have one. It took uh, two and a half seconds. I think I deserve a large round of applause for that. Wow, thank you. And now a little magic. The amazing Randy first gained minor prominence at science nights at Oakwood Collegiate. But his true fame came when he learned how to escape from sealed trunks while hanging upside down by his teeth underwater. Tonight, he treats some aspects of seances. Well, I'm going to give you a demonstration this evening. <clears throat> it won't really prove very much, except that uh, it is possible for people to be very tricky. Yeah, I, I don't know who wrote that introduction to Randy, but listen to that again. The amazing look at the Randy look on his first face. gained minor prominence at science nights at Oakwood Collegiate. But his true fame came when he learned how to escape from sealed trunks while hanging upside down by his teeth underwater. Tonight, he treats some aspects of seances. I'd pay to see that. 
Yeah, so these are early home movies that were done, I think, 8 millimeter, or, uh, Super 8, uh, by his friend Harry Smith uh, in Toronto, who owned uh, a magic shop. And it's rare, uh, <laughs> Randy without facial hair, mugging himself. piece of rope, he said, showing them a piece of rope. A piece of rope that's about the same length from here to there as it is from one end to the other. It has two ends, especially this one, and I am going to show you how a fellow ties his shoelaces in the morning if he happens to be a magician. He does it like this, you see, and then he goes to school or to work or wherever he goes. But sometimes, before noon, his shoes will fall off. How about that? This is my idea of a pleasant evening anyway. We've got an old friend back on this show, a fellow who's been on before, and we've loved him when he's been on. It's a great show for me to do because all I have to do is try to remember not to cackle too loud, that is jokes, and to come up for air and break for commercials. But he's absolutely marvelous. He's a wonderful man. Terrific man. It was great. Got all kinds of mail last time he was on. What did you say your name was? Uh, what did you say? Would you, would, you, would you tell us who you are? The Amazing Randy. Ta-da! The Amazing Randy. What? I, I think I, I speak for most of the group when I say, what have you got to say for yourself? Uh, the, um, you need a mic. Uh, oh, is he, can we get his lab on, please? Uh, the clown thing. Yeah. That, that was, uh, oh, are you good? Uh, that was an audition for the Magic Clown. After the regular series uh, gave up some years ago, another company came along and decided they would uh, make a, uh, a couple of programs with it. And uh, you, you should have seen some of the rest of it. It was even worse than that. <laughs> but uh, the, the series did sell in Rhodesia and Detroit. <laughs> Sister cities in the Magic World. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's the only place it was ever seen, and I hope that not too many people saw it, but now they'll be seeing it a lot. Oops. So you got the gig? I got the gig, yes, but it never, the series never materialized. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. no. no oh, it, so that's it. That's the that, only that's it, footage that's it, we have in that it, yes. costume. Did you explore that character further? Uh, no, no, oh. I abandoned that character completely, <laughs> I agree. Yes. Well, I think that piece of tape was worth the price of admission. Well, I had to actually had to shave off my head, you know, and it was in the middle of the winter, and uh, we shot that in Toronto, Canada. They know how to do winter in Canada, I can tell you, and I was born there, so I know. And uh, I had to shave my head, and put the the makeup on, the skull cap, and the whole thing, and I had to go out on a wintry morning after shaving my head. I thought I was going to die. When you had a full head of hair and you have to go, you, you get used to the, the, the weather protection that it gives you. But that was very painful, very painful. So when you evolved, evolved into this condition, you were previously prepared. Oh, yeah. yeah evo evolution does it. <laughs> right. yeah. Great. So um, let's talk about it. what's it been like following this guy around for two years? Um, <clears throat> oh, there are many ways I could answer that. <laughs> It's been exciting, actually, it's, it's sometimes very tiring. Um, I, we followed him to, to Spain and Italy. He's hard to keep up with. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't afford to follow him to Australia or India, even though we would have liked to, but um, it's been a really fascinating experience getting to really get to know him and Davey and to see how hard he works. I mean, I, the problem with being a documentary filmmaker and following a subject is that you have to really show their lives and show what they do. And if it's somebody who's very energetic and very active, then you have to be there for that, before it, during it, and after it. And that can be very exhausting. Um, but 
we've gotten to know Plantation Florida very well. Yeah. Uh, and I hope we haven't uh, overstayed our welcome. It's, it's, you know, two years is a long time. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's just, uh, just, you know, it's just Justin and I. You know, it's just us making the film. So we're producing, we're shooting, we're writing, and we do have another editor. We have an editor who's working on it full time, but it's just us two. So, uh, you know, we do outnumber Randy two to one, but still, uh, it, it, he can be a handful without question. Uh, but he's always, you know, having shot a number of docs and things, he's always cognizant of the camera. He's always aware that it's there. So sometimes it's hard to distinguish between James Randy and the amazing Randy, which is really great, really great for the film. That, that's interesting, and so I'll put the question to you. What's it been like, expected and or unexpected, being followed around by these two for the last two years? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. that's what it's been like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm rather accustomed to this sort of thing. I've had to be followed around by camera crews in, in Great Britain and, uh, and in um, BC Australia, yeah, quite often. So I'm rather accustomed to it, but these two fellows, I gotta tell you, I trust them completely. At first I was a little leery, eh, I wonder, but uh, they soon proved themselves to me and uh, I have no doubts whatsoever, but they will show every bit of integrity in the way they're going to treat the uh, the history of uh, James Randi slash the amazing Randi. And uh, I have great confidence in the success of this film as well. And I'm sure you'll all add to that by buying copies of it or whatever you have to do. <laughs> I'm sure of that. Oh, thank you. So uh, I have great confidence in it. I have no doubts of it whatsoever. So, and I, I think it's a great time for this, for this project, actually. You know, on the one hand, uh, you have to use historical footage, archival footage, for he's been long retired from his performing career. So we're going to show some of that now. Uh, but on the other hand, we're in a position to kind of look back, right, and see what's been accomplished. So I think if you, you know, you could have made a film about him almost at any phase of his life and fill the film, fill the book, but now you kind of have... A whole story, right? And that's, and I'm sure that's an ambitious story to even begin it's, to try and a, tell. Horribly ambitious, but beautifully ambitious. And like George said, it's a, it's a, it's a wonder nobody has done this before. It really is a wonder, and I'm, I'm glad we are. I don't know what we did in a past life to deserve it, but we're very fortunate <laughs> to be able to do it. And just to kind of fill you in, can you bring that card up, the photo, please? We, um, we now have been working on the film. Is it up? We've been working on the film and there's so much, there's so much from his life, not only now, but in the past and the episodes and the magic and the escapes and the, you know, what's happening now. And so we're trying to piece it all together and we're trying to figure out what to do and what not to do. This last week we hold ourselves up in a cabin and we, we had a cut and it's literally four hours long. It's an assembly edit and it's four hours long. And so we hold ourselves up with our editor and for a week we just hammered out these note cards and moved them around and fought and yelled and uh, screamed and tried to figure out what we can keep and what orders we want to tell of this film. We, we're blessed with uh, an, a wealth, uh, like an overabundance of, of riches. And in fact, it's going to be very difficult for us to wheedle it down to an hour and a half because he has lived such a rich life and there are so many great stories to tell not just the history his history as an escape artist as a magician as a skeptic and today but you know the actual the alpha project pop up you know there's just it it could be a mini a mini series uh, you know in a way i realize i've been we've well, been faced with this every year because every, every year for these conversations i've picked one topic one episode or one topic and, you know, we did Project Alpha a couple of years ago, and to, we couldn't, to me, to even try and cover that story in 45 minutes was a, was a challenge. That, uh, you could do a whole film on the Alpha yeah, Project. exactly. You do a whole film on Papa. So, speaking of this uh, archival footage, you, you've edited together a, a few clips um, of archival footage as far as the escape work, right? Yeah, so, this, uh, this is a little bit of, I mean, part of it is a historical biography, uh, part of it is a contemporary story of Randy's life and what's happening, but this is a little bit of the uh, kind of history of, of Randy's life as an escape artist. Real quick, these are scenes from the film and they are rough scenes, so 
the, 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 the music is scratched, the picture is compressed, um, the archival is really small, so it'll be pixelated. This is not how the end product will be. Please keep that in mind when you watch it. Houdini is a legend. He was the first big novelty act to really become a star in vaudeville. And he outshone everybody else. There were imitators all over the world, but they didn't come anywhere near them. Well, the thought naturally occurred to me that I could base a good deal of my life on Harry Houdini and his adventures, perhaps do some of the things that he had done and perhaps even improve on them. I wanted to break his records. I wanted to stay in a sealed metal coffin longer than he did. I wanted to get out of a straitjacket faster than he did. But I soon found out that was not quite the right approach. I should do something on my own. My goal was to be James Randi, the amazing Randi, not an imitator of Harry Houdini. As an escape artist, I have broken out of straitjackets, uh, out of chains, out of leg irons and handcuffs. There was nothing he couldn't get out of or make it at least seem like he was getting out of it. Open Sesame. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. Whoa. The door's opening. beat Houdini's record of being buried in a coffin. The clock is still going. He has established a world's record. In some cases, 200 feet of rope wrapped up on a chair on stage. You just hope that the theater doesn't catch fire because they're likely to leave you behind to fry. but it's when some of the things like hanging over Niagara Falls wrapped in a straitjacket at 20 below zero or something, that gets your attention. And that got my attention too. So that's, that's a highlight reel that we could spend a day or make a whole film out of. One quick ad, we'll just pick an anecdote, and one of my favorites uh, is the Niagara escape. Oh, yeah. And when you came down, <laughs> and they ostensibly put a microphone in front of you. Yeah, well, first of all, when they brought me down from the, from the straitjacket hanging over at Niagara Falls, uh, it was, I think, the 20th of January or something possibly the coldest 20th January in history. And my beard was frozen to the black ski mask that they had pulled over my head. I couldn't get the ski mask off, for one thing. It was frozen in, and my breath had congealed in the wool, and, uh, or nylon, perhaps, I don't know. The budget was small, you know, after all. And uh, I had to rip this thing off. Oh, talk about pain. You have no idea. So I finally got out of the thing. They brought me a big pan of warm water, and I had to put my face down in the warm water, and they were trying to get all the ice out of my beard so I could be interviewed. And I looked over the fellow's shoulder there, and I saw a Chinese family standing there. Now, I have to go back a bit in time. The night before, the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the, the federal police in Canada, they had to cordon off all of Niagara Falls, the whole tourist area there, uh, at midnight, the night before, it got closed down. No one was allowed in. They had police cars parked every place. And I'm looking over in the morning and seeing a whole Chinese family in Mao jackets yet, standing there, two kids and their mother and father. And I said, there's some people here. And the fellow turned around. He said, get them out of here. Get them out. Now, they had come down through the woods, which is an adventure greater than hanging over Niagara Falls in your straight jacket. Uh, in the middle of this blazing winter, 
they had determined they were going to get on the scene, and they got down there, and I saw them chatting with one another, and I started to laugh. They said, what are you laughing at? I said, I can just imagine now when these people go back to China, they're going to start the story that, you know, it's very interesting in Niagara Falls. Every January the 20th, they take a guy out, an old fella, and they, they hang him over the falls, and if he freezes solid, it's going to be a long winter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for all I know in China, I've never heard the story, having been to China several times since, but uh, I, I suspect someone's going to point to me in the street one day, that's the guy they hang up in the falls. That's great. Super, superhuman. Um, and uh, so, that, well, obviously, I, I assume a substantial portion of the film will address some of these legendary stunts and scams, Project Alpha, uh, for example, and among them, the Peter Popoff revelations, yes? Uh, you know, yes, of course, and like you said, Alpha could be a whole film. Carlos Hoax could be an entire film, uh, and, and Popoff is one that I just absolutely love because behind the scenes of the Popoff debunking is intrigue and suspense and men dressing up like women and men dressing up like cops and, and, and Randy assembling a crack Ocean's Eleven type team. So it's just full of intrigue and mystery and suspense. Um, and we're gonna show you a clip right now from this. Uh, again, it is rough. Uh, the, the, just to give you a little backstory on this, uh, Peter Popoff, of course, was a faith healer who was bilking people out of millions of dollars. And there was a, an event in Houston and Randy asked Banachek, who was living in Houston, to go and um, investigate this uh, particular tent revival. You can roll number two. Three. After a while, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, and, and, and after some of the emotion had died down in me, Popoff said, I need people to come down to collect money for him. And basically he had 15 buckets. And I get this bucket, and I'm supposed to go around the auditorium and collect money, cash. God is touching that thyroid condition right now. God is touching your nerves right now. God is touching your eyes. Just lift up your hands, get ready, here it comes. These people were throwing like five, tens, twenties, because one of the things Popoff always tells them, whatever you give, you will get back tenfold. So if you put a dollar in, hey, you're gonna get 10 bucks. You put a hundred bucks in, you're gonna get a lot more money back, and these people truly believe this. So I made three trips around, filling my bucket up. This is 15 buckets, and we're pouring the money in, 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 you know, into this big thing for him. So he's walking off with all this cash from these people. Jesus, mighty name, right now, right now, right now. And as I get up close, I happen to look and I notice in his ear that there's an earpiece. There's no ear hole. It's a little piece of plastic in there. And I come back to Randy. I says, I think I know what's going on. I said, what's up? He said, he's wearing a hearing aid in his left ear. Now, a man who heals the deaf, you wouldn't think would be wearing a hearing aid. 1627 10th Street? Is that right? That's right. So, one day, Randy called me and suggested that Peter Popoff was using a radio transmissions, but they couldn't really figure out how it was done. And they wanted to know if I could intercept it or detect it. I had a friend, luckily, who was in the surveillance equipment business. And he had access to a very high-tech uh, anti-surveillance scanner would record on a big floppy. Remember the old big floppy disks? It would record on a floppy the frequencies that exist normally in that area, sort of background noise. And then I could eliminate those. When I go there for the event, for the performance, I would say, ignore all those frequencies that are there normally. And then I realized I also needed to be able to record what we heard, not just detect it and listen to it. So I had to get another device, a cassette recorder, to, that I could hook into the scanner. We knew that Popov had a big mass meeting, a service as he called it, happening in San Francisco. And we figured we'd better be there, but I was a little noticeable, even in disguise. I didn't want to take a chance, so I stayed away from the main action and I let Alec handle the whole thing. The day of the event, I went there early and I was nervous and I, checked and double checked all my equipment, had everything ready, and then I had to take a deep breath, get out of the car, pack up my stuff, and walk towards the building like I belong there. 
So, uh, it's terrific. And what I really like about this is that we'll be able to get to see the story told by multiple parties who were involved, which, which we don't often get to do. When we discussed the pop-up affair a few years ago here on stage, we, we discussed it at great length and, and showed a lot of the video. Uh, but it's nice to have all the, the parties involved. In terms of the video, of course, this all leads up to the famous Johnny Carson re reveal. And when, as we showed here at the time, when <clears throat> uh, basically they run the tape first, as it appears to the public, he's doing all these mystifying readings, giving people inf personal information where they live, what's wrong with them, they have cataracts, this and that and the other thing. It's claiming it's the voice of God or the voice of spirit talking to him. Uh, and then after showing that, Randy briefly tells the story of the investigation. It says God is, uh, must be broadcasting at however many megacycles mm -hmm. and shows it now with the dubbed in voice that they tapped in on of Popov's wife, not only giving him the information, but also in this really degrading way to speak about the supplicants, right? Right. Uh, which is appalling. And of the many stories about this, one that I'll ask you to briefly repeat is after that tape is shown, Carson is, is visibly disturbed. And, and, and he, he's, he, he says it in a kind of moderate way. He, he says, well, that's disturbing to see. But he's really kind of shaken by this. And that's because he didn't know what you were going to show. And yes. why don't you just tell us that story? Well, the day before, when I went to his uh, producer, uh, and described this to him, he reached for the phone. He said, oh, we'll put this in tonight. And he reached for the phone. I said, wait, don't tell Johnny. And he said, oh, you know John doesn't like surprises. And I said, but think of the expression on his face. He thought for a moment. He said, okay, but it's on your head. <laughs> and it, as it was, it worked out very well. But John didn't know what to expect. He didn't know what the gimmick was that Popoff had used. And he told me afterwards that he had always been puzzled about how Popoff knew all this personal information and such. But uh, it, it, the thing worked out very, very well, and we literally put Popoff out of business, except the sad part is he's back in business now and doing just as well as he did way back then. Incredible, but true. And he's got some new scam, actually, some, some, some item that he's selling. Oh, no, what, Miracle Water and, right, right. and, and water. Miracle Rice and all kinds of strange yeah. things like that. And you put these felt insoles in your shoes, and uh, they, they've got scripture on them, you see. So that helps you a great deal, of course, as you can imagine, when you put your shoes on in the morning. Uh, but he, he's got all kinds of gimmicks that he's selling like that. And uh, he's, he's making money. He's making money hand over fist. Again, just the same way he was before we exposed him on Carson. And I must say, I'm very... No, I'm not very, not very glad about Johnny Carson's not being with us any longer, but I'm glad that he never saw the fact that just a few years ago, Popoff declared something like $1.1 million more income than the year that we exposed him on the Carson show. Right, and Carson, of course, the Carson Foundation being longtime supporters of the, of the yes. Randy Foundation and still yes. supportive of the foundation yes. today. The John Carson Foundation assist us great, greatly with the uh, TMAM meetings that we have, and we're always grateful to John in absentia for helping us this way. So I asked you what it's been like following this guy. Yes. I asked you what it's been like following this guy around. You said you could have answered it in very many ways, so I'll ask at least one of you to throw me at least one anecdote of something interesting or Whatever that's uh, well, come up. I'll tell you what I think is funny about Randy that we garnered is that uh, his house is very clean, and he, he, he for Randy, truth is truth, you know, and, and time is truth. I'm, there are probably some physicists out there who would argue with it, but uh, and he, every clock in the house has to be set to a, the exact second, the exact minute, and if it's not, he'll get anxious about it. And one day, Randy and I, we were driving somewhere, and he, we drove past a community college, and he just, that clock, that damn clock, they, they won't fix that clock. I've asked them, I've wrote them three times and asked them to fix it. And they, they asked me to speak there, and I told them I won't until they fix the clock. You know, so, <laughs> so he just, it, truth is true. I gotta tell you about that clock, that heritage clock down the corner. It's, 
it's 10 minutes slow. It's a four-sided clock, and the dial is the same and all, but it's 10 minutes slow. And I was asked to give a lecture there, and I volunteered to do it because it was a community activity. And I, I went to see the, the dean of this little college thing there, and I asked him about the clocks. I said, your clocks are 10 minutes slow. He said, oh, should we do that purposely? Because there are very big penalties in this school for being late to school. So we give them the advantage of the 10 minutes. And I said, oh, just like when they grow up and go into business, uh, they'll, they'll get that advantage too, right? <laughs> he didn't care for that very much. Uh. <laughs> so anyway. Gone again? Uh, yeah, we're down, we're down to one. Um, so, uh, well, that's great. And it, that's wonderful. And, and the opportunity to see that kind of thing in the film, I think, will be delightful to see who the guy really is on stage, off stage, backstage. Uh, and that brings us to this. That brings us to personal life, real life, the, the, the man behind the curtain. And uh, Michael Shermer this morning made a brief passing reference to some big news. Yeah. Well, uh, Michael, uh, I referred to it obliquely, so to speak to be a gentleman, and he always has been a gentleman, certainly with me and with everyone else that I know of. Um, I, I can take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, confiding in you. This uh, ring is not just for decoration. I, I uh, bundled myself off to Washington, D.C. about 10 days ago or so, and uh, my partner in life, Davey Pena, uh, is restricted in his travel right now. He had to be driven all the way from Fort Lauderdale to Washington, D.C. He met me there, and uh, we went into a little chapel sort of a thing there, and we got married. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Well, well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we did this uh, for, for legal reasons, for one thing, because uh, Davey has some legal problems with the fact that, uh, that he is not here under proper circumstances. But hey, after 27 years of living with him, I, I think I've learned a good deal about him and he about myself. And we're very proud now to be married in at least Washington, D.C. And I hope that that's going to spread from state to state. There are only 13 places in this country uh, that you can actually get legally married. And we chose the one that was closest to us. And that's fantastic news. Just really well, fantastic thank you, news. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And So, uh, and what we'll close on here is, because the film is going to include information about real life, your personal life, oh, yeah. there's a beautiful little piece here you guys have put together, and I think it speaks for itself. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so just let me know as soon as you uh, leave the airport. Okay? Okay, bye. So they're waiting for luggage. So, yeah, people find funny that I call him amazing. <laughs> but I like to call him amazing. Did you just leave or? Oh, really? Oh, okay, so you're close by.
Hello, I'm a bit amazing. tired, you know that. Oh, so good to be back. So good to have you back, amazing. <laughs> good to be here after all that to travel. Have you back, amazing. Now I got to show you something. Yes. As you can see, I got yes. a new cane. Yes. Oh. Yes, and you've got to get the full effect of it now. Are you ready? Okay, let me see. That's pretty awesome, amazing. No, this is given to me by Chikap. Oh, oh, yes. nice. Oh, I remember this place. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Here. What a pair. Yeah, that's good. And this one over here, my eye. Look at this. This is my favorite chair, which makes me look like the pharaoh. <laughs> let me see, let me see, let me see. Isn't that something? Silver. That's awesome, Randy. Yeah. Now I gotta get some silver cane head polish, I guess. I don't That's know. awesome. Yeah. Are you tired? <sighs> yeah, I won't have any trouble nodding off. No. Not at all. I, I just wanted to add one thing, uh, not to that clip specifically, but we were, we, ra we did a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds for the film. Thank you. Yes. To anyone here who donated to help us make this film, we, we really, really appreciate it. And we're really, really sorry that we haven't gotten the rewards out yet. We've been sending some out, but as Tyler said it's really the two of us and we have thousands and thousands of signed books and Coasters and amazing decks of cards that we are having manufactured and I just wanted to like both thank you and apologize <laughs> Because it has been in the works and we're you know working 24 hours to do everything just make the film and Get out the rewards and if you did not have the chance to contribute to the Kickstarter, you can still contribute to the project. So you go to anhonestliar.com, anhonestliar.com. If you leave out the an, it's very convenient. Then you get to my website, which is honestliar.com. <laughs> and we might talk about that in the film. But it's anhonestliar.com. Thanks to the both of you so much for doing this. I can't wait to see the film. I'm sure everybody here feels the same way. Thanks, Thanks so, so much. much. James Randi, thanks a lot. My pleasure.